We're gonna talk about five foods that might spike your blood sugar a lot. Most diabetics often don't realize that these things have carbs when putting them in their mouth. And I can assure you, I was no exception. I didn't count the carbs in these foods either until this was brought to my attention by my friend Scott. So I invited him to my channel to share this very interesting topic with you. Scott? Hey, my name is Scott. I'm a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology, also a type 1 diabetic for over 30 years. So what I wanted to go over today are some underestimated hidden sources of carbs that can sometimes take us diabetics by surprise. Sneaky source of carbs is vitamins. I'm specifically talking about gummy multivitamins. Every vitamin nowadays seems to come in a gummy form. There's gummy vitamin C, gummy melatonin, gummy multivitamins. When I was little, the only option we had was those chewable Flintstones, but nowadays it's all about the gummies. Everything comes in a gummy form. Every type of vitamin or supplement comes in a gummy. So while gummies are a good way to get your daily vitamins in, they taste good, um, a lot of people just don't think about the carbs that are in them because we don't even think of it as a food product. It's a vitamin, right? It's not food, so it shouldn't spike my blood sugar. But unfortunately, most of them are packed with sugar and they certainly can spike your blood sugar. So if we look at one of the leading multivitamin brands, Vitafusion, they have a multivitamin that has calcium. And this was just one of the first ones that I came across. The recommended dose is two gummies per day. And two gummies has seven grams of carbs. And the first listed ingredient is actually sugar. So while that may not seem like a lot, it can certainly have an effect on your blood sugar. And if this is something that you're taking every single day, you can have a spike in your blood sugar every single day when you're taking your multivitamin. Just by comparison, if you do the math, this actually has twice as many carbs as gummy bears have for the same serving size. So while these gummy vitamins seem like they're a healthy, good option, they are adding a bunch of unexpected carbohydrates to your daily intake. So if you're taking these gummy multivitamins, definitely be careful, consider the carbs that are in them. For diabetics, it may be better to stick with just the plain old pill form that generally has zero grams of carbs. Or if you really like the multivitamins, you don't wanna give that up. There are some lower sugar varieties. Wow, that's crazy. Vitamins have twice as much sugar as gummy bears. Well, thanks for bringing that up, Scott. By the way, guys, if you want to increase your vitamin intake, I have one more tip for you. How about eating more fruits and veggies? Just saying. So what's number four, Scott? All right, let's talk about condiments next. So ketchup, barbecue sauce. This is another one that I feel a lot of people underestimate. We realize that they obviously have carbs, uh, but a lot of people don't realize just how many carbs they have and how quickly you can ruin an otherwise low carb meal if you use them in excess. So just to give you an example of how many carbs some of these condiments have, ketchup actually has four to five grams of carbs per tablespoon, Barbecue sauce has a whopping seven to nine grams of carbs per tablespoon. And even A1 steak sauce, which is a favorite of mine, actually has about three grams of carbs per tablespoon. So be careful dousing this on your otherwise low carb chicken or steak, because you can definitely add some underestimated sneaky carbs to it. So what about some better diabetic friendly options? Well, there's a bunch of condiments that actually have zero grams of carbs. One of my favorites is mustard, zero grams of carbs per serving. Most hot sauces, if you like them, they're also zero grams of carbs per serving. And mayonnaise, while it does have a decent amount of fat, uh, it's generally zero grams of carbs as well. So definitely those are some better diabetic friendly options. That's really helpful. By the way, I love mustard and hot sauce. So this one is really easy to implement for me. And I have a couple more to add here too. What about some homemade guacamole? It only takes five minutes and it's a lot healthier than any of these processed condiments. I will add a link to my guacamole recipe here and in the description below for you to check out. All right, let's talk about one next that's always bothered me a little bit, and that's sugar-free foods. This is one that unfortunately many people have fallen into the trap thinking sugar-free means no carbs, it's not gonna spike my blood sugar, but unfortunately that's not the case. So while sugar-free foods don't affect your blood sugar the same way a regular sugar candy or snack would, they still do have carbs most of the time and they still do have an impact on your blood sugar. Now most sugar-free foods and candies, instead of adding sugar or corn syrup, they add something called malitol. Malitol doesn't affect the body the same way sugar does and it doesn't get it completely absorbed by the body. It still is a carb and it still does affect the blood sugar as well as the GI tracts. You wanna be careful. If you eat too many of these, you can have some pretty unpleasant symptoms. Definitely be careful with these as a lot of people expect no impact on their blood sugar 
And unfortunately, like I said before, that's not the case with sugar-free foods. They definitely are a sneaky source of carbs. That's a good one, Scott, because sugar-free doesn't mean carb-free, right? And I always like to look at the label when I'm buying any packaged foods. And I follow a very simple rule of thumb. I'm always picking the one with the lowest sugar content, the lowest saturated fat content, and the highest fiber content. I found this strategy works the best for most stable and most predictable blood sugars at least in my case so what's number two scott all right so what about salad dressing next let's talk about that so salad dressing is definitely another sneaky source of carbs that a lot of times we don't think about or maybe we just get a little too carried away with how much we use and really underestimate how many carbs it can actually have so you may get your nice healthy salad ready veggies etc this is the perfect low carb meal for a diabetic and then you throw on some dressing that unknowingly has as much sugar and carbs as chocolate syrup. There's some salad dressings that are notorious for being high in carbs. So the ones that you should watch out for is honey mustard. That's definitely one to be careful with. Uh, Catalina dressing is another really bad one. And then a lot of the fat-free dressings actually have a lot of carbs because they try to make up for the lack of fat by adding excess sugar and obviously adding to our carbohydrate intake. Prime example of this would be Ken's Steakhouse fat-free dressing. This one has 16 grams of carbs per two tablespoons. That is a lot of extra carbs. So let's say you get a little carried away and you add four tablespoons to your salad, which honestly is not that much and that's probably pretty common for most people. Just to give some perspective, four tablespoons of this salad dressing is the equivalent in carbs as two slices of bread. So you think you have this nice low carb salad and you're really adding the same carbs as throwing two slices of bread right on top of it. Some of the more diabetic friendly salad dressings my go-to is Zesty Italian that only has three grams of carbs. Ranch only has two grams of carbs. And then good old fashioned oil and vinegar only has one gram of carbs per serving. Better options for diabetics, lower carb in those types of salad dressings. I mean, wow, that's crazy. The steakhouse dressing has 16 grams of carbs per two tablespoons. That's like pure sugar. This should definitely be made illegal. Just kidding, okay? Guys, before we get to the most underestimated source of carbs and one bonus tip we have for you, do you know about any other hidden sources of carbs? Let us know in the comments. So Scott, who is the winner? Who is the number one? Probably one of the most underestimated and surprising sources of carbs in food products is seasoning. This one, I'll be honest, I rarely consider it or calculate it into my carbs, but the seasoning that we add to our foods and recipes, even the garlic powder that you may sprinkle over your broccoli, it definitely has carbs and it's something that we should be considering as diabetics. So just to give some examples, onion powder is 5.5 grams of carbs per tablespoon, chili powder is four grams of carbs per tablespoon, and garlic powder, one of the most surprising of all, is a whopping seven grams of carbs per tablespoon. So these can definitely add up. The next time you're making a low carb soup with veggies and you're dumping in a bunch of garlic and onion powder, make sure you keep in mind the extra hidden carbs that are in those spices. I know I love to dump garlic powder onto my foods, my broccoli and other low carb things. And I don't realize all the carbs that I'm actually adding that can contribute to my blood sugar spike. To be honest, I didn't count carbs in seasoning either. But you know what? I think if you forget to count those, it's not so bad actually. Especially if you use natural seasoning like dried herbs, because these are loaded with antioxidants and they don't have any added sugar. And here is the bonus tip I have for you. Just try to get rid of as much packaged food as you can. Can. Replace them with some whole foods and more natural options. This will be so much better for your blood sugar. The thing is, if you are trying to lower your blood sugar and achieve better HbA1c result, you need to do a bit more than just these five tips we just gave you to avoid the sneaky sources of carbs. In fact, we want to give you seven more hacks that most diabetics don't do. And these hacks will help you to add another piece to the perfect blood sugar puzzle. You can find them in this video. So just just click it and watch it next. Don't forget to sign up for Scott's channel and if you want to connect with me one-on-one -on -one and talk in person, sign up for my Patreon or book a coaching session with me. Links are down below. Ciao!